This, although it is small, is an authentic migration. The horses are the Arab stud of the Royal Horse Society of Iran, heading for the high summer pastures under the care of Mary Gara Goslu. Mary's late husband owned the nucleus of the herd, and it's almost entirely due to her efforts that the horses have been kept together. The 450 mile migration takes 14 days and the twice yearly passing of the herd causes great excitement in the isolated upland villages. No one knows the origin of the Arab breed, which peoples first tamed its ancestors and bred it to its present grace and beauty. It probably came from the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and is the traditional mount of the Bedouin. Migration to the cool highlands helps the herd in several ways. Apart from ensuring better pastures, the change of altitude and temperature toughens up the breed. Exposure to excessive heat not only stunts the early growth of foals, it also restricts the breeding season so that fewer foals are born. So the long uphill journey is well worthwhile. Migration is halted in the middle for two whole days to give a rest to both animals and men. The destination of the migration is Barkana, 8,000 feet up in the mountains. At this time of year, melting snow feeds streams that farmers tap to irrigate the fertile soil. Careful husbandry provides enough food for both the villagers and their guests. The welcoming stables belonged to Mary until she made a gift of them to the nation. And these horses form the nucleus of the first stud book, recently completed after years of work by the Royal Horse Society. Before long, all Iranian Arab horses will have to be progeny of stud book members to qualify for World Arab Horse Association approval. Now there's a chance for proper veterinary attention to the damage inevitably caused by the long journey. Veterinary care of a very high order is now available in Iran. The reason for this is the existence of several centers of veterinary and agricultural education. This operation is for the reduction of an inguinal hernia in a valuable horse. Iran regards this educational effort as an important part of her investment in the future. These students are the up-and-coming veterinarians, some of whom will take the new knowledge to the tribesmen in the more remote parts of the country.
Equally important in many ways is the role of the imperial stables in Tehran. These excellent buildings provide an ideal environment for some of the finest examples of international breeds. And these horses, the central stock group of the Royal Horse Society, are an extremely valuable resource of the country. They are, of course, the nucleus from which new stock can be reared and trained for all ceremonial occasions. And they're also a reservoir of the best of the native breeds. These Kurds are related to the Jaffe strain of the Arab from Iraq. Courage, sure-footedness, agility and alertness, with their thrift and tolerance of a wide temperature range, make them a perfect mountain horse. The royal stables also form a focal point for all kinds of ancillary activities associated with the care of the horse. This technique of shoeing is a comparatively modern practice introduced from the West. Iranian farriers trained at Melton Mowbray in England pass on the craft to their colleagues. The skills of international competitive horsemanship also have to be learned. Jumping isn't one of the obvious strengths of the traditional horsemen of the steppes. As well as acquiring new skills, Iran is making an effort not to lose the old ones, especially those that are part of her own contribution to horse history. This saddle maker, working on a pack saddle, is drawing on know-how handed down through his family for generations. And sometimes it isn't the skill that needs protection, it's the artifacts. At least one devoted collector, Lev Tamp, is trying to save some of the dramatic and elaborate jewellery that was once part of the ceremonial costume of the Turkoman people. Pieces like these used to be made from Tsarist gold coins and set with semi-precious stones. They're now very rare because many have been melted down for the value of their metal. Lev Tamp has also managed to assemble the accoutrements appropriate to a Turkoman horseman of 50 years ago. His regard for authenticity covers the ancient Asian cinch or girth knot, a knot still used by gauchos in South America, possibly a direct link with the conquistadores. Saddle cloths, panniers, feeding bags, all once woven by Turkoman women, are also becoming scarce. But from material in his collection, Lev Tamp can give a stylish imitation of a sheikh riding out to survey his flocks. Alas, such splendor is no longer worn by the Turkoman people. But it remains an image from a glorious epoch of history. Looking back more than 2,000 years, along the track from Persepolis 